Hi, I'm the Bachelor Farmer Cook, and this is Prep Class. Today we're going to start part two, which is actual slicing and dicing of onions. We started with the intro to onions, now let's take a look at one. I'm going to use all my examples on yellow onions because every time you cut an onion, it's the exact same process for pretty much every single one of them except green onions. And we'll get back to that one in a moment. First off, what you want to do is you want to find this little part. See the little pointy part? Point that away. Find this part. Cut yourself a little flat point. At which point in time you want to go right in between that crown. Cut it in half. You want to grab this layer. And strip it out. Now the first thing we're going to start with is just regular sliced onions. Now regular sliced onions are pretty simple. Depending on how thick you want them to be, they're just half onion sliced. So when you break them apart, all of this comes together. You can use this for sauteing onions. Um, well, you'll read about that in the uh, recipes. Now for diced onions, what you want to do is you want to cut on little tiny angles. You want to cut straight across many times. Now how many times you cut in here is going to be how fine your chopped onions are going to be. Watch your fingers, don't bleed on the food. And there we have, you have your diced. So, these are your sliced onions, for sautéed or grilled. Here's your diced onions. Now onion rings are probably the easiest part of onion preparation you can possibly do. There's just a little tiny secret to it. Again, we're going to take that part on the bottom off, give ourselves a flat surface, except instead of cutting it in half like we did with sliced onions or diced onions, we're just going to simply cut from here. And remember, this is where a sharp knife is important and where slowing down and taking your time is even more important, not for the food, but for your fingers. Don't get in a hurry in this part. I've had times when I've worked on jobs and in restaurants that there have been major mistakes made. Now one of the things you're probably noticing is that in my onion rings, I didn't bother to take the skin off of the onion. And it's true. I didn't. And there's a reason for that. Onion rings are never the entire onion. So, in trying to get onion rings, you go ahead and leave that skin on there so that you can remove it as you remove your onion rings. Now, of course, if you notice, these little middle parts, they don't look like onion rings at all. Now, I know there's a lot of weird restaurants that actually do still cook them, but most of your onion rings, you want to have in sort of the medium to larger size rings. That makes them look good, helps them have more surface area to batter, and they fry a lot better. So you'll want to hang on to these for your onion rings. And the rest of this, I can demonstrate another thing that's called the rough chop. And the rough chop honestly shouldn't need much of an explanation. <laughs> if your recipe says you need a rough chopped onion, well, here, let me just show you with this tail end piece here. I'll trim this up just a little bit, get it out of my way. Now, here's rough chop. And then you throw it in the pot. And there we have it. Sliced, diced, onion rings, rough chop. That's your basic introduction to onion prep. I'm the Bachelor Farmer Cook, and remember, if you get it just a little bit wrong, rough chop. We'll still eat it. Until then, stay out of my food.